Hi, I'm Chris, an ACS enthusiast. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get up and running with ACS on your Raspberry Pi 4. First, let's learn a little bit more about ACS and its architecture. Then, we'll get to the demo using Raspberry Pi. ACS is Amazon Common Software for Devices. This software makes it fast for you to integrate the Amazon device SDKs needed to make a smart home device into your own product. The architecture is made up of four main components. First, ACS has a unified API integration layer needed for the Amazon SDKs. These are common interfaces used by apps and higher level SDKs. Below that layer, we have pre-validated and memory optimized components for common functions such as connectivity. These are components that are necessary to enable the Amazon device SDKs. Next, we have the device porting kit or DPK APIs. These provide the necessary abstractions from underlying hardware and the operating system. This is what really enables portability across devices. Finally, we have the ACS test suites. These are multi-tiered tests that make it easy to localize defects in device software to specific parts of the system. This package includes support for frustration-free setup, or FFS, and the Alexa voice service, or AVS. It allows you to build and run reference code to get started building your own device. Now that you know more about the architecture, I'll walk through the steps to download the code and build your Raspberry Pi. I'll also walk through the process of registering your device with FFS, and at the end of the demo, you'll be able to run Alexa on your own device. I'm going to give a pretty high-level overview in this video. However, if you want more in-depth, step-by-step instructions, please go to the Quick Start Guide on the Developer Portal for more information and specific commands to follow. If you already have a Raspberry Pi with the latest version of Raspbian installed, you're all set. If not, you can install Noobs or new out-of-box software, which is an easy-to-use OS install manager for the Raspberry Pi. This will install Raspbian for you. Some kits even come with an SD card with Noobs pre-installed. Once you have Raspbian installed, boot it up and use the UI to set up some basic options. These include selecting your language, keyboard, and setting up your networking. A typical Raspberry Pi will look something like this once you've set it up. Since we're building a smart speaker, the first thing you want to do is test your Raspberry Pi mic and speakers. You can use your favorite text editor to create a file called asoundrc in your home directory. Make sure your mic and speakers are connected and use the menu in the Raspberry Pi OS to check your volume level. In this step, we're going to get the ACS package and set up our developer machine to build ACS and install it on the Raspberry Pi. After logging into the developer portal, you'll be able to download the source from this link here. Next, you'll be installing some dependencies on your developer machine. Some of these you may already have, but the commands are included here to install everything that you need. Let's go through them now. First, you'll need to update your repositories. This command will install the various packages that are needed for the build. After this is done, we'll do one more command to install PySerial. This command will install one more library for Python that we need. Before we get to installing the required package on the Raspberry Pi itself, we need to gather some info. In order to transfer files between the Raspberry Pi and your desktop, you'll need the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. You can find this by hovering over the network icon in the top right of the Raspberry Pi. Take note of this for later. Now, on your build machine, you'll extract the ACS package that you just downloaded. It'll take a few seconds, and it'll create a directory structure containing all of the code you need. Once that's done, you'll see a script we created for setting up your Raspberry Pi. It will also create a sysroot that contains the build references needed for cross-compiling the code and transfer it over to your Ubuntu machine. You'll know this process is complete when you see the message, sysroot created successfully. Now let's build ACS on Ubuntu. Again, it's just a script that takes care of most of the heavy lifting for you. It takes some time to build all the software needed, possibly up to 45 minutes depending on the speed of your machine. So now's a good time to grab a cup of coffee and come back. If everything's been set up correctly, you now have the right binaries needed to install. You guessed it, just another script will copy everything you need from Ubuntu back over to your Raspberry Pi. You'll run this command to do so. It'll take a few seconds to copy everything across and install everything it needs. Now we're getting to the good stuff, as we're going to provision the device using FFS. FFS technology simplifies the setup of connected devices by utilizing a peer-assisted model for setup. A device which is connected to the internet, known as a provisioner, adds a new device or provisionee to get connected to the internet. FFS not only helps devices connect to the internet, but also registers the device to a customer's Amazon account, configures the device based on account preferences, and connects it to the Alexa service. In this demo, we'll run the FFS provisioning on the Raspberry Pi, and a phone app will be the provisioner. Now, let's begin the FFS process, which consists of two stages. In the first stage, you need to prepare your Raspberry Pi for FFS. 
In order to provision your device, you'll need to go to the developer portal and get the right certificates. Click on this link first to accept the agreement. You'll need to create a new DSN for your Raspberry Pi. You can do this here in the developer portal. Request a new DSN, select Raspberry Pi 4, say yes, and a new certificate will show up. Get that new certificate, download the file, save it, leave this page up while you go and run the next steps. Once you have the JSON file from the portal, you run a script to do the actual provisioning on the Raspberry Pi. This next command will send provisioning details to your Raspberry Pi. This command will get the CSR from your Raspberry Pi, transfer it back to your Ubuntu machine, and this is what you will need to pass back to the developer portal. Copy this text, including the begin and end characters, and use this in the portal. In a few seconds, you'll be able to download a new certificate that you'll use for the next step. Download this certificate from the developer portal and save it as a file. This next command is transferring the signed certificate back to the Raspberry Pi. When you see device registered, you've completed these steps successfully. Now that you've started FFS on your Raspberry Pi, you'll complete the rest of the process on your phone. Start the FFS app, log in with the same developer account you used when you accessed the developer portal, select UI based activity, click start setup, click start discovery, and then you'll wait for the device to connect. This will walk you through a few screens. Once it's connected, you'll enter your network details. And after a few more screens, you'll see a green check mark with success, knowing you've successfully provisioned your device. While there are many components to this flow, the Raspberry Pi side is taken completely care of by the FFS app. You only need to use the app on your phone to go through the steps. Now that the device is set up, we'll start AVS and get ready to talk to Alexa. Issue these commands and start the app. You can find these in the Quick Start Guide. Now, the big moment is here. You've done all the work building, configuring, provisioning, and starting applications. Let's see if Alexa has any good jokes for us today. Alexa, tell me a joke. Why do chiropractors make great comedians? They love to crack you up. Hmm, okay. Maybe you aren't in the mood for jokes. You can also find out some interesting facts. Here's one that seems appropriate for Raspberry Pi. Alexa, what's the value of Pi? The approximate value of pi is 3.14159265358979323846262. All right, good info, Alexa. Congratulations. You were able to set up ACS and now have a functional Alexa smart speaker. Today, we learned about ACS and its architecture and used Amazon's FFS technology to seamlessly enable a Raspberry Pi as a smart speaker. That's it. Thanks for following along. I hope you enjoyed learning about ACS from Amazon and using the Raspberry Pi development kit.